Chinese go to pick food from the hinterland, see them perch on those cargo trucks. When they bring it, maybe they'll come to Abogloshi or Kaneshi or something. They'll put all the, the things there. And then the other people who sell maybe along the way or in smaller satellite markets will come and pick them there. So those people would not have to go into the hinterland to bring the food. The trucks will bring it and then they would, uh, these other people will come and pick them to their various stations. That is how the feeding service works. Feedrain services have uh, grown for technical and operational or economic reasons, and uh, they can be uh, physical or equipment constraints. You know, it's not all ports that have the needed equipment for the big container ship, for example. When you go to some ports, they don't have the equipment. When we go down, you see some of the equipment, they don't have them. So if the, the ship calls there, it becomes a problem. They don't even have the gears to work the ship. And you know, these big, big ships, they, they are what we call uh, gearless ships. The container ships, they are gearless. The, con the ball carriers, the big ones are gearless. When we say they are gearless, what we mean is that... Are you recording now? They are gearless, what we mean is that they don't have their own lifting equipment. They don't have... Uh, derricks or cranes to lift the cargoes on and off the ship. So in that case, when they get there, it is the port. It is a port that must provide those facilities. And some ports do not have all these big gantry cranes that we, we have in Tema. They don't have them. So if a ship calls that way, then it's going to be a problem. How are they going to get the cargoes off the ship? So for that reason, then they have to go to another port that has it. And then ships that have the gears, because some ships, the smaller ships, have their own gears on board the ship, their own lifting gears. So they can then pick them and distribute them in such ports. Okay. So it can be for physical as well as equipment constraint. Physical will be by way of less draft in that place, so they cannot go there. And then another reason why feedering uh, is encouraged or has grown is inefficient and unreliable port operations. When you go to some ports, you wouldn't believe it. It would take days to discharge the cargoes. Cargoes that have been loaded within just three days can take three weeks in some ports just to discharge. We are very, very inefficient. One such port is Douala. When you go to Douala port, Things are very, very slow. There's so much congestion in the port. There, there, there's there's no, no discipline in the port in the way they move the cargoes and especially the trucks. Everybody does what he wants. So it's even when you have loaded your truck to get out of the port and move with the truck becomes a problem. Okay. So it's very, very um, um, uh, important that the port is efficient. You have to have a port that is reliable and efficient to be able to move cargoes out. Another port that comes to mind is uh, that is very inefficient is uh, is in Algeria. Okay. You can or, 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 or run or run and then the other one I've forgotten the name. Every minute you are going on coffee break. Every minute. Every 15 minutes you are going on coffee break. And when they go on break, about 30 minutes, they are not back. So cargoes that you, you spend just three days in loading, you spend three weeks, that, that is the port that we went and we had that. We loaded the cargoes, all the cargoes come in there in three days. We spent three weeks in that port. Yes, it's charging the same cargo. So it's very, very difficult. When it happens that with the big ships, if they go there and they are tied up, people have their cargoes on board waiting for delivery and then they are tied up in only one port. But if it is given to smaller ships and if they are tied down at least it's not that bad. Okay. And also direct ports, uh, direct uh, uh, port calls leads to high uh, costs because you, when you call each of these ports you have to pay for all the handling and everything. So it becomes a bit difficult for them. So the reasons why we have the feed ring is to reduce the daily costs associated with the operation of large ships 
reduce the waiting time that a large vessel, for example, if it's carrying 80,000 metric tons, a container ship to be tied down to only one port is not economical. To overcome water depth restrictions due to the increasing size of the vessel, and also to overcome lack of proper cargo handling gears and inefficiencies, of course. The types of vessels that are used for feeding container ships, rural ships, conventional cargo ships, that is general cargo, bulk ships, and most of these uh, the operators, they specialize in short sea passages, just a short time and they, they are there. In Europe, you find a lot of such ships, small, small ships, doing, doing the, the, the distribution of cargoes uh, in the, in the sub-region. In Europe, the type of ships that engage in this, we, call, we refer to them as coastal trade liners. They are always moving about, distributing the cargo. <coughs> now I want to look at the port facilities, the loading and unloading facilities in the port. One of the main activities in the port is loading and unloading. They look at other maintenance and other, facility, uh, provision, other services like the provision of dock, uh, dry docking and so on. But the main one has to do with the loading and unloading of ships. That is what uh, the, traditionally general cargo ships might have their own cranes or derricks which are on the, sh on the ship, but in some ports when you get there, they will be on shore as well. When it happens that way, it's up to the port. Sometimes some, in some ports, whether you have your own cranes or derricks, they will tell you when you come there, you have to use their cranes or derricks. Uh, their cranes, they have cranes. You have to use their cranes. Okay. And that is because they, they try to force your hand using the excuse that they don't like the smoke. These days, especially in the advanced countries, they'll tell you you are polluting their, their environment, and so they'll ask you to, when the ship gets there, you have to shut down your ship and connect to the shore <coughs> electricity. So they'll connect you to shore electricity so that the thick smoke from your funnel does not pollute their environment. And when that happens, then they will insist that you use their uh, cranes to do the discharging. Because if you, you use your derricks, sometimes the power that they will supply to the, the ship might not be enough to power these, all these equipment. So you have your um, you have the general cargo ships, you have the cranes and derricks. You have cranes like these ones to do the loading and unloading of the cargo. have these types of cranes. For the general cargo ships, these are the type of cranes that are used for loading and unloading. As you, you can see, they are different from that which is used for the containers. They are less um, uh, uh, cumbersome or they are not so big. They are just some um, pillar-like structures that are engaged in the discharging of cargo on board. This, uh, this is the type of crane used for general cargo handling. And then you have, depending on the... Is it, the light is too much. Oh. Is it okay? The shore uh, uh, crane lifting um, a cargo which is palletized, but they can, they can lift so much because it's using the frame. You think that it's a container, it's not a container, it's a palletized cargo. But because it is using the frame, it can lift so much at a time. Then when we come to the, the discharging of uh, containers, when we come to the discharging of containers,
the discharge of containers, they use mainly the ship to shore gantry cranes to do the lifting off and on to the ship. But when the cargo gets to the shore, then you have so many types of gears. When you use, for the big ships, or ships carrying any appreciable number of containers, if you use the ship's gears, it's a very slow uh, process. As you would see, you have to use this container spreader, okay? This container spreader, which would mean that somebody has to, they had a mechanism when the container sits on, and like in the very olden days where somebody had to go and put the, the sling, these four slings, in the corner castings here. Somebody had to go and put them in the corner castings, and he had to climb on top of the container to do that. But then they brought this one, you said, hey, they would climb on, do it, get down a ladder, and get off before they can leave the container. So you can imagine how slow that process was. <laughs> 